All right, let's look over problem two from the free response section of the 2013 AP Calculus practice exam. We have a penguin population on an island is modeled by a differentiable function p of time t, where p of t is the number of penguins and t is measured in years for years or t from 40 to zero. There are 100,000 penguins on the island at time t equals zero. The birth rate for the peng penguins on the island is modeled by this equation here. And the death rate is modeled by this equation, d of t. Birth rate, b of t. Death rate, d of t. Part A is now asking for what is the rate of change of the penguin population on the island at time t equals zero? Okay, so then, um, since it says rate of change of the population, we have to consider both of these, the birth rate and the death rate. And we just, you know, think, like how many, oh, how many people, how many penguins are gonna be alive? Like when you combine those two, are we gonna do birth rate minus death rate or death rate minus birth rate um, or add them, subtract them? Like, just think of that, just think of it logically. And you know, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, you're gonna have um, it be the birth rate minus the death rate. And that number will tell you essentially like, um how many you have at that moment or how like how how um how and how's the or if you do birth rate minus death rate it's going to give you a value that will tell you how much the population is increasing by in terms of the rate so in this case it's asking for it at the very beginning right at the start what's the rate of change so what we're going to do is b of zero minus d of zero The birth rate at the start was 1,000 times e to, to zero power, uh, which is just going to be 1,000 because e to the zero power is just one. We do 1,000 times one. D of zero is going to be 250 times e to the zero. So it'll just be 250 times one, or just 250. And then you'll just get 750. So then it was increasing by 750 penguins per year. So 750 penguins each year, or princess per year, I guess more, makes more sense. All right, um, part B, we got to the nearest whole number. What is the penguin population on the island at time t equals 40? Okay, so then to find the population, we can basically integrate the birth rate minus the death rate because that's gonna undo those rates and give you like, you know, just the like the births and deaths and then births minus deaths you know will give you you know total number of penguins or the population of the penguins so um now we're, we're going to integrate all the way up to 40 and let's just remember that the population started with 100 so then what we're going to have is that penguin population or p of 40 at time t equals 40 is going to be 100,000 which is the initial value that's not a hundred, that's a million. Plus the integral from zero to 40 of B of T minus D of T, birth rate minus death rate, death rate. Integrating this, we, we can just use our technology or calculator and you'll get 100,000 plus 33,057.6, which then gives you 133,057.6 rounded um, to the nearest whole number will give you 
part C. So the nearest whole number, what is the average rate of change of the penguin population on the island for time for, from, from zero to 40? Okay, so then average rate of change, we're just gonna use the average function. You know, we got that one, remember the A or the one over the B minus A, one over the 40 minus zero or just 1 40th times the integral from zero to 40. And then from there, we just do what we did in the previous example or previous part, birth rate minus death rate, integrate that, and then multiply it by one over 40, or divided by 40. So let me bust out my calculator, let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So then you get 826.44, or you could say 826 penguins per year about. It's increasing by a little more 826 penguins per year. All right, in part D, to the nearest whole number, find the absolute minimum penguin population and the absolute maximum penguin population on the island for time for from zero to 40. Okay, so this is gonna be a little, you gotta think deeply, a little more you know, critically. So we can find the minimums, but with the general strategy, picked up in like unit three with critical values and you know second derivatives first derivatives you know all that um because essentially you want to see what happened when the, what happens to the derivative um the, the the derivative tells you the behavior of the function if it's increasing decreasing if it's like stabilizing um it's going to reach an absolute minimum if the death rate you know starts to you know steadily or, or starts to, you know, it's, it basically tends to, um, it will be a minimum when, as, <laughs> after like the death rate exceeds the, the birth rate after for a while. It depends how long, but just because of, so in other words, if the, the as soon as the death rate exceeds the birth rate, it doesn't mean it's going to be a minimum. We want to see how long it'll take. And it depends on like the graph and vice versa. We, we, it will reach a maximum if the, if the birth rate, you know, starts to, you know, routinely or after a while it will all start to you know you know continuously exceed the death rate but anyways let's just bust out a, a, a graphing calculator or something technology so we can see it more clear let's see if we find another one that i already typed in battery near death okay so i did all sorts of things here um If you guys can see that, but um, okay. So see the blue and the red. That's the um birth rate and death rate. They're both. That's where they both intersect. They both intersect at about thirty four point six five seven. Now, let me zoom in a little bit here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened here? Oh no, that's fine. Actually, it just acted weird. Now, um, I made another graph that's equal to the difference of them. So if you um, take a look at my equations, my functions, that's three of them. The third one, I made it so that it's um, the birth rate minus the death rate. And I get the black graph down there. But let me just, I probably should just walk you all through it instead of 
probably not a good way. So let me, let's just go ahead and graph them. Graph, like, let's make, um, let's graph the birth rate minus death rate. So then we have, what is it, 1,000? 1,000 E to the point 0.6 T, or point 0.6 X. Oh, what was this? A thousand e to the point oh six x. Oh, point oh six. Whoops. And then the other one we have um two hundred fifty times point one to the t. I think okay, it looks like that because my um my um windows are not uh, like normal now. <laughs> now we're off too bad. Let me zoom out. We'll get there. Come on. Oh, here we go. I've got some life. Come on. Okay, so sorry about those technical difficulties, but yeah, you could if you get the concept pretty well abstractly in your head, you can understand that what we want to see when they're equal to each other, and then see that'll be one of our critical points to analyze, and then you know through looking at the interval zero to forty, we'll we'll test those points. We'll test the thirty four point six sixes, and then at the zero and forty. Because again, that'll be our critical points, just like when we're talking about, you know, solving, um, you know, first derivatives. But um, for example, we remember we have p of t or p prime of t will be b of t minus d of t, setting the derivative equal to zero. We're going to basically have zero equal to b of t minus d of t. Meaning we're, 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 they're equal to each other. When is the death rate equal to the birth rate? But then we have to see up to that time or what is going on up to that time um, to see if it actually will have an extreme population. Um, so then we can, we can see that we're gonna, we're gonna use when the values here are 34.657, 34.66, or just, we're also going to use zero and 40. And we just evaluate those. We check all three of them to see if they, um, which one's the biggest. We plug zero into our equation. And that's going to be what we started with 100,000 because nothing has happened. <laughs> it's just going to be the population will just be that because time zero nothing really happened so then we'll just have the population be a hundred thousand because that's just right at the start now at 34.66 let's see what has happened let's study that so make some calculations yeah. 
we can just integrate from zero to 34.66. The whole b of t minus d of t. And we'll get about thirty for the thirty nine thousand. 39,167, but then we have to add up that, we have to add up that 100,000 because this is just what it accumulated over that period. It started with 100,000. So then from here, we'll have 100, 139,000 and 100, 139,167. And then we just check um, 40. So let's see, so then P of 40. I think we already had that, didn't we? Oh yeah, we have it over here. 133,058 penguins. The absolute minimum and absolute maximum on the island, we would have the maximum is right here. Absolute max. And the absolute minimum. I mean, I don't know if you have zero, but it, they start with this, but um, the minimum, absolute minimum is 100,000. So because that's what the population started with and it kept, and it stayed above that the whole time. Absolute minimum. Okay, so there we go for that problem. Um, we're done with the second free response. And I'm going to move on to now the non-calculator, the remaining four. So um, leave, leave me any questions in the comments section. Um, give me some feedback. I'm not going to act on it that I'm best at explaining this. I know I can be... A little confusing i can ramble so, but just feedback is always helpful so i can try to improve and um let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover like that urgently otherwise um i'm going to move on to the, the remaining free response questions and make sure of course that you're subscribing that so you can keep up with all my material if you want to otherwise i will see you guys in the next video